It's March 25th, 2014, and this is OK 101. Bailey, your current vice president, and this is Mr. Jonathan Lotus, your future vice president. This is the guy that I want to take over uh, for me. Uh, and before we get started, I just want Mr. Lotus to talk to you guys and give you guys a little bit of information about who he is and his background. Thanks, Elijah. So I'm Jonathan Lotus. Um, I've been in martial arts for 23 years. Uh, currently hold a second degree black belt. I've had the pleasure of having a lineage of really, really good instructors from Rick Holt, Joni Combs, Kevin Galloway, and Nubis Catalog, Mr. Johnny Watley. And I'm currently teaching martial arts in Yukon for core martial arts with Michael Cramp. And I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Um, when we talked that, for those of you guys that were at the February uh, 15th annual meeting, we talked about uh, the president selecting a nomination committee and something that we're trying a little bit different. For our top three board position, that'd be president, vice president, and che uh, treasurer. Uh, we're going to have those individuals handpick somebody to take over for them because their their duties are a little bit more extensive than the, the collective group. Uh, me and Mr. Lotus back a year and a half ago were talking about the direction of the where the OK was going and how he wanted to be a part of it and, and uh, it need to be more structured. So we've been on the same wavelength. So all the changes that we've made. Uh, we've been in direct contact with us, so that's why I want him to be my successor as vice president for the OKA. He's got the same amount of energy, uh, very time efficient, um, uh, very clear and decisive on his management skills. So I just want you guys to know who he was. You'll see him at events, or you should go up and ask him a question just like you would me or any other board member, and just talk to him just a little bit. Now, today, uh, or actually a day ago or two days ago, I asked you guys on Facebook to comment or leave a post or send me a message on what you wanted today's lesson to be about. And today's lesson is going to be about face contact. So the last two videos, episode uh, four, we talked about, about gear and legal gear that you can wear at a tournament. Episode five was about legal targets. And one of the targets where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of conflict and a lot of controversy is face contact. When is it allowed? When is it not allowed? What about face shields, and et cetera? So we're going to go over that now. Um, and we'll just, we'll go ahead and take a fight stance if you to the right side. Now, for face contact, we know divisions 17 years and younger, there's no direct contact to the face. That's an immediate foul. If there's blood drawn, that's immediate disqualification. Well, in those age divisions, what if a competitor has a face mask on that has a shield? The shield can only go, and hang on one second, I'll be right back. I'm just wanting to be nice. That's all right. So the shield can only go as far as the actual foam padding of the headgear itself. So if his shield is from cheek to cheek and forehead down to the chin, I cannot strike in that zone. If I am, I'm penalized. Now if the shield goes past this point and a little bit further back onto the foam, that's still legal because top of the head and inside the head, past the ears to the back of the head, are all legal targets. Now, before we continue with this conversation, the top of the head is only a legal target area if there's a clear technique involved. Hammer fist is no longer a clear technique within our organization. Hammer fist is not allowed to the top of the head because 100% of the time, if Mr. Lotus bends his head down, whether it's a jab or a cross or an actual hammer fist, I'm always going to impact that spine and cause uh, damage to the soft tissue in the back of the neck and I could mess up growth plates. So that's why we stay away from the top of the head with the hammer fist because I can score with that 100% of the time. Now if it's an axe kick and I'm here and I'm switching, even a trained fighter, a very skilled, is probably going to hit that target maybe 50% of the time. So a less skilled fighter that's throwing axe kick or crescent kick is going to drop down to probably 10%. So I'm still safe in that range. Now we talked about how far back the, the headgear can go. That's for ages 17 and below. So you can go ahead and take that off. For the adults, which um, 18 and up, light face contact in the advanced division is acceptable. So if we're here and we're just moving around, bam, I snap that jab, there's no blood, 
uh, to the face, that's considered a point for the A team. Years and up, advanced division. Now, black belt division, the same rules. Controlled face contact is legal. If there's blood drawn, that's a disqualification because when we talk about the contact for a, an actual strike, it has to be held in reserve of its full capacity. So if I'm sitting here and I turn that hip and snap, that's a little bit more than um, full capacity because I'm accelerating the hip and I'm snapping through with the knuckles. That's going to draw blood. I know that's going to cause harm and injure my my, my opponent. So that's a, a grounds for disqualification. Um, other than that, um, how do you see us moving forward in the future with the OK? Well, I think that. Um the premise of what the court, I mean, I think that the premise is uh, just the executives that we have now and the executives that are going to be coming in. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of really talented, incredibly uh, skilled people that are going to be on the executive board, and we're all on the same page in, in the respect that we want the OKA mm -hmm. to broaden out. Yeah. We want to be able to offer even people out of state, mm -hmm. you know, a really it's a serious organization, an organization that um, that has talented competitors. Yeah. It's organized correctly. Um, so I think that's going to be a main vocal point with what I want to get involved with, which yeah. is making the OKA broaden out so that people from Texas, people from Missouri, people from all over the country can go to Oklahoma, fight great competitors, yeah. and be a part of something really really special yeah and and on that, that same point we've been reaching out to those states and that's the feedback that we've gotten uh, before it was a deal that uh, when you came to Oklahoma we had to almost censor ourselves on what we did if you if there was a certain rule from another state we, we changed and adapt to that we can't do that because you can't have a clear foundation and structure so uh, what we did is what mr. Lowe's was talking about instilling uh, a structure a foundation and adding quality we're not going to go out and chase other competitors and other events. We're going to support, but we held our heads up high enough to know that we respect these other states and their rules. They respect our rules, and we welcome them just like they welcome us. Um, uh, the selective process for the board of executives is, is a very extensive one. We all take that very seriously. Uh, I've known Mr. Lotus for I don't know how many years. We're both in the wild bunch. We're both brothers in arms, and I wouldn't leave you guys in somebody's hands that's not going to take care of you guys. Um, like I said, look for them at events, at tournaments, uh, you know, talk, interact with us. And, uh, you know, th that's it for today. Class is, is pretty much a journey. We talked about uh, face contact, um, the face shields, top of the head target. The last thing is this Saturday is going to be a live um, OK tournament talk. So I'll be walking around interviewing parents, uh, students, competitors, instructors, promoters. And then I'm going to combine that, and I should have that video to you guys on Sunday of a live feed from the event. Uh, one thing that I want to uh, let you guys know is make sure to join us on Twitter at Okla Karate Asos. If you don't know the Twitter uh, handle, go to the uh, OK page, send me a note, and I'll send it to you because our next deal from the 29th until June 14th, our tournament, whoever responds and retweets um, uh, our tweets that we post and our motivational quotes, they're going to be in a drawing to get free entry to a tournament and to receive a state finalist bag to hold their gear. So make sure to keep up with that and thank you guys. Uh, anything else you want to say? Uh, just that the reputation is only going to get better and better with the OKA. Um, we've got great people that are going to work really, really hard. We're very passionate and we're determined to make sure that the Oklahoma Karate Association um, it's going to do nothing but grow and become more stronger and more reputable throughout the nation. So that's all I've got. All right. See you guys down the road. Take it easy. Out of one.